I've got my passport, but I don't need it because for Field Trip Friday today, we are going to be going to sunny Los Angeles, California to visit the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. So before we go down to Southern Los Angeles County Museum of Art is in Los Angeles, United States. Okay, it's in California, Southern California, and it is the largest art museum in the Western United States, a museum of international stature, as well as a vital part of Southern California. LACMA shares its vast collections through exhibitions, public programs, and research facilities that attract over a million visitors annually. LACMA's collections encompass the geographic world and virtually the entire history of art. Among the museum's special strengths are its holdings of Asian art. We have a, a print up here. Uh, housed in part in the Bruce Goff designed pavilion for Japanese art, Latin American art, ranging from pre-Columbian masterpieces to works by leading modern and contemporary artists, including Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo, and Jose Clemente Orozco, and Islamic art, of which LACMA hosts one of the most significant collections in the world. A lot of good art on display at the Los Angeles County uh, Museum of Art. It's a perfect place to visit on this field trip Friday for office hours. Let's go. I think there's one exhibit in particular that we'll be able to check out. And if you'll notice, look at this. We have all these mannequins. Okay, mannequins are you know, like the models on which they put clothing. If you're in a store, you know, you might see a mannequin and then they put the clothes on the mannequin to see what it would look like on a real person. And in this case, they have all these mannequins and they have all these clothes on the mannequins because this is a presentation, a, an exhibition about fashion and clothing because fashion is a form of art. It is a way of expressing culture and um, meaning through clothing. And around the world, you might find different kinds of fashion, different kinds of clothing for different kinds of situations. So what I think we could do is take a look over here and it says revolution, evolution. Revolution, of course, meaning when things change, and evolution means change, and revolution means like important big change that happens again and again. And let's see if we can read what this says. Okay. It says, for centuries, men's fashions have undergone revolutions in dress and evolutions of style that mirror similar shifts in society. Many of these transformations have been led by men who consciously used clothing to express their individuality and ideals. And when you get dressed in the morning, what do your clothes say about you? What do they say about the kind of person you want to be, the message you send to the world? How can you speak without language, just in the clothing that you wear? The resistance to everyday fashion norms can take on extreme significance in periods of revolution and anarchy. Anarchy, no government. So it's rules, the only rule, no rules, anarchy. Dress indicated political allegiance during a time of often violent upheaval. Working class militants, known as sans culottes, literally 
without knee breeches, wore practical trousers, those are like pants, and hip-length jackets, essentially the template of menswear that we now take for granted. During the French Revolution, you know, 220 years ago, they dress in this very revolutionary way, the sans culottes, but the way that they dress in their, their plain pants without any special things on the trousers and just a regular coat, if you saw someone walking in plain clothes today, it wouldn't seem so revolutionary. Time changes, and the way we express ourselves changes with it. Uh, 200 years later, the confrontational anti-fashion of punk underscored the power of clothing to shock. Okay, And so that an that you see, anti-fashion, it means no fashion, fashion against fashion, where the rules are that there are no rules. Anti-fashion is fashion against fashion, if that makes any sense. Revolt in clothing has been as aggressive. As seen in Aesthete and Hippie and Youth and Rebellion, other fashion insurgents have worn luxurious textiles in striking colors or patterns to express their resistance to the limits of traditional menswear. For much of the 20th century, youth subcultures, including zoot suitors, teddy boys, mods, punks, new romantics, and hip hop ushered in lasting changes in men's fashion in ways ranging from subtle Unlike youth fashions, the elegant clothing of the dandy is understated with tasteful attention to detail and construction. Restrained, tailored looks are the uh, consummate mark of the dandy and his various iterations, ranging from the innovative tall coats of the early 1800s all the way to the plum suits of today's well-dressed man. Now that we've thought a little bit about how fashion has changed, about the revolution, the evolution, right? Resistance and norms, rules and anarchy. We've got these, uh, it looks like four different styles that they're talking about, four or five different styles. We got the, you know, the anarchy, the punk, that's shocking. Hippies, dandies, right? Striking colors, those kinds of things. Let's take a look at some of the designs that they have in the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. We'll look at the different kinds of clothes on the mannequins and decide, is this clothing shocking or is it trying to be colorful or is it trying to be you know, revolutionary because it's so plain? or tasteful and understated. Let's take a look. So we're back in the museum and I'm going to take a look. Here's this first uh, suit here. And so we're going to look at the, there's a jacket, it looks. Right, so it's actually not a suit. And I'll tell you why it's not a suit. Because the pants don't mass match the jacket. So we have trousers, these tailored trousers, and look at how shiny these shoes are. And then we have, he's wearing a purple jacket and kind of like a, an eggplant colored waistcoat in this turquoise tie. So as you're looking at this jacket, tie, right, coat, let's remember our styles that we were thinking about. What do these clothes say to you? Contrast this look with this person over here. Black leather, also almost like a suit coat, but there's no shirt under the suit coat. Black leather trousers, shiny black leather shoes. And look at the back of the coat, it goes very long, right? And the sleeves on the jacket are much longer here too. 
And here's another uh, suit. Now this is a suit because the jacket and the pants are the same color. They clearly go together and it's like a tan color. It's a little wider and there's a shirt underneath, but no tie. Okay. So we back up. Uh, let's see if we can zoom out a little bit. Okay, so you see the different kinds of fashion. Um, where do we get a sense of anarchy? Remember, no rules, sort of like a punk aesthetic, you know, where, where things are not what we would expect, right? Tearing things apart versus the more understated, you know, some of the dandy look suits where it's trying to look as though someone has a lot of money it's not trying to be too flashy we can see maybe the sans culottes of the uh, french revolution see let's go actually let's go over here let's take a closer look at these revolutionaries so con contrast let's contrast the way this person is dressed with the pants, the trousers that go all the way from the waist down to, you know, the ankles. Just what we would call maybe normal pants today compared to this person on the right. This is more maybe aristocratic. Aristocratic meaning that it, it's part of the, somebody who has a lot of money and is trying to be fancy and showing off their wealth and their power. So they're wearing these special kinds of pants and then the high socks and the shoes with the buckles. This person on the left is saying, no, we're going to get rid of the aristocracy. We're going to resist. There's going to be a revolution. We're going to wear just pants, trousers down to our ankles. But now imagine the year is 2020 and you saw someone walking down the street, who would look like a revolutionary? Who would look surprising and different from the others? Trousers that go all the way down or the person with the pants that go down to the knees, right? Changes, clothing changes, um, just like language changes over time. 